Well, hi everybody. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're watching me from. I am Sally Roper coming to you from Ocherias in Jamaica. And fairly recently I did a kiln unloading and I was talking about my handles and I said that perhaps I would do a short video on how I do my handles. I don't have much problem with cracking uh, or them breaking off when they bisque fire or when they dry. Um, so I just thought I would share this with you and uh, I hope that some of the techniques I use you can adopt into your style. Everybody does things differently. This is how I do mine. I'm going to uh, drop the camera down to my work table. I must apologize. I am really, really dirty. I'm using my 391 clay and it's just a mess. My studio is a mess. And once I make one pot, I go through and do a whole bunch because it just is nasty dirty. So here we go. I'm going to, this is um, actually what we're gonna end up making. Here's one that I've already done with the handle on. And um, I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I sit them on these little clay pots while I'm working. I do four at a time while I'm working because it helps keep them round so that um, so that they won't go, uh, they won't misshape while they dry. I don't leave them on there for long because I don't want the rims to crack, but I leave them on just long enough that hopefully it will make a difference. So let me continue on down into my work area. As you can see, my wheel, everything is just a mess with this, this, uh, this black clay. But this is the end of this series. I don't know that I'm going to make too much more. So anyway, what do I have here? I have the mug that I'm going to put my, uh, my handle on. And it has, um, I used a, um, a crinkle wire cutter to uh, create this pattern on the bottom. So I look to see where, um, where, the, where it kind of, uh, the pattern starts and it's right here. So this is where I'm gonna put my handle so that when you lift up the mug, this is, um, you get to see that, sorry, you get to see that pattern when somebody's drinking from the mug. So it's important that you inspect your mug to decide where your handle is gonna go. And um, I also have, this is my template handle. This is the shape that I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be making all my handles on. Let me just see if I can put it in front of my hand to show you some contrast. So this is the shape. This is the, um, the piece that I extruded. Um, I have a handheld extruder and I made, well, I'm doing 12 mugs today. So I made about 15 handles, always make extra handles, just in case there's a little blip or a bloop with something or one of them goes, um, one of them um, just doesn't work out. You have some spares. And then what I do is that once I extrude it, I just do a little band and I sit it on my table like this so that um, it will dry and harden a little bit because I really want the um, moisture content in my handles to pretty much match my mug so that it also reduces the risk of the pieces separating or the shrinking, um, them shrinking differently. So now what I'm going to do is, um, now that I know where my, where my handle is gonna go and I have the shape of my handle, this is the piece that we're gonna trim. So what I do is I just kind of line it up on, the, on, my, on my master one and I, well, I could probably do it the other way, put the master on top and then I, and I shape shape the handle somewhat so now you can see it's one stacked and what I do is about an eighth of an inch past where the edge of this is I make a little I make a little notch because that's going to be where I start my cut. Now one of the things that um, people are prone to do is to is to when they're when they're um, cutting off the ends of unwanted ends of their handle they just go straight across. Well this is a, a uh, I hope I hope a very helpful uh, tip for you. If you put something um, flat across on something that's round, that the when this dries, it's probably going to try and misshape. The cup is trying to fit the handle, and it's going to flatten a little bit, and it might go out of out of shape. 
So what I do now is that when I cut this, I cut it a little bit round. So you can see there's a little dip in the middle and on the other end so that when it sits on top of the mug, it sits flush. And then I don't have to worry about if it's sitting flat and it pulls away or, or misshapes, the, um, misshapes the handle. But let me show you what I'm talking about there. If you can see that. You can see just how nicely that fits in there. So when I take my needle tool now, I'm just going to, when I carve down, I'm just going to make, make it a little round. And you can see there's a little bit of a dip in there. Well, not too much. So let me just go back in there and accentuate it a little bit more. And then I do the same for the other end. So now I have, I have a curve on the ends. Now I take this dowel. Um, I kind of adopted this technique from um, Joe Thompson, who's from Old Forge Creations. If you don't watch him, you really should. He's, he's, he's really good. Anyway, he has a, um, a bit, a dowel, a bit that he uses. And what he does is he just runs it along. And his bit actually leaves a bit of a groove. I, the best I can do for where I am, because I'm in Jamaica and I don't have access to all the tricks and tools, is I just use a, a knobby dowel and this curved part right here, I just run that in. And what it does is it creates a little bit of a flange at the top and on the underneath of, of where I'm going to join the handle onto the, onto the pot. And again, I do it and I just roll it in there. And then again, you can see I've got a little bit of a, a flange Then I'm going to decide where my handle goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Zeem tool and I'm just going to, I have some magic water here, which is water, um, soda ash and oh, sodium silicate. I, I don't know, there's a, um, you can go online and find the recipe for magic water. But I have some here and I have one dedicated to my dark clay and one dedicated to my light clay, to my B-mix. Anyway, what I do then is I just roughen up the inside of that on both ends. Now on the first pot I do, what I do is I've got it in its shape and I will rest it up against the edge of the pot where I want the handle to go. Remember, I'm, I'm going to position it right here. So I just eyeball it there and eyeball it here and I make my mark. And I look and see, is that what I want my handle to, if that's what I want my handle to look like. I'm sorry if I keep taking it out of the camera, um, out of the picture frame. Um, it leaves a little bit of a mark, so now I know where I can score my pot. But I can also do it because I'm looking to see and make sure that it lines up with where I want the pattern on the bottom. So then I just score the, I just score the pot. I take a little bit of the magic water and I dop it on there like that. Now I'm about to add the handle, so I just double check it and to make sure that, sure that it's um, good to go. Then all I do is I take this end and I put it onto here and I just give it a bit of a push. Then I put my thumb underneath where the, where the bend, sorry, where the bend of the handle is. I put my thumb underneath and then I just lightly set down where the bottom is gonna go. Then I check it to line it up and I look and look at the bottom and I look from the top and see how it's lined up. I'm um, not liking how this is, it's looking pretty crooked. So this is at the point because I haven't attached anything yet that I can adjust the lines and the look of the handle. And that's pretty good. Again, I check it in the bottom, I check it from the top, then I'm ready to seal the handle onto the pot. What I do here is because remember I have a little bit of a flange there from, from having used my dowel to roll the ends. So all I do is I just take my thumb now and I just press 
that flange into the bottom and it makes a really neat join. And I go around to the side and I attach the sides. Then I go to the top and I do the same thing. And I just use my finger and I just pull that flange into the pot and again on the sides. Then what I do before I attach the insides, I take my brush. Now this is another helpful hint and I just take a little bit of water on my brush and I drop it on in into the join into the, where it joins there and I do the same on the bottom. What this does is it will help um, regulate the um, moisture content of the handle and the and the mug and hopefully as it dries um, or hopefully as it sits for the first little bit it'll even out the the moisture then I just take my needle tool on the inside and I just smooth out that flange and do the same on the bottom and I just get rid of all that excess clay that I've picked up on my tool. Okay, so now the handle is attached. Then what I do is I take my brush again, and then I just go over the join with my brush, and I make sure that it's all well sealed. And I go again on the inside, and especially with the corners, And I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking my brush and I'm just tidying it up. And this is probably where I spend the most amount of my time now is just making sure that the mug is all tidy. And again, along the top here. So because I... Um, I curved the the handle when I was cutting the cutting it for sizing. You'll see that it's not going to pull away. It doesn't misshape my mug at all. It's still nice and round here at the top. And now I just go over and I just kind of use my finger and I just kind of tidy it up a little bit. Because this clay has a little bit of grog in it, I don't really want to use my sponge, but if I was using my bee mix, I would probably take my sponge and I would just go around and I would just tidy it up a little bit. Because this clay has just a slight bit of grog, if I run the sponge over it, the grog is going to come to the surface and I don't want that. I want it to stay really, really nice and smooth. If anything else, I can just use this little brush. Because there's lots of clay in the, in the bristles of the brush, it almost acts like a chamois of, some, of sorts, and it just tidies it up. Then what I do is I just look at the side and I make sure that the handle is the shape I want. This is the last point where I have any ability to be able to create the shape. I want a little bit of a, of a bend here and a bend there and a small arc there. And I think I've accomplished what I set out to do. And you can see now a lovely handle on this pot. The join here at the top is really nice. The join here on the inside and on the bottom is really nice. Again, I take one last look and then I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm just gonna put my, um, my stamp right here. Because I've used the wiggle wire to create the bottom. If I sign my name, it won't show up very nice. So here's my stamp, and this is the stamp I, I have for some of my pieces. So there you have it. There's a, um, a mug with a handle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rest it on, on top of here. I just lightly, I don't push it down. I just lightly put it in, and that will help. It will help to, um, again, make sure that this stays round just poked my handle. Uh, this stays round. Sometimes I give just a little turn just to make sure that the clay is round and I let it sit on there for a couple of minutes. Um, as you all know, clay has memory. So there you go. 
so there you have it. That's how I um, that's how I do my handles, and I hope you found this helpful or interesting. Again, the tips I have are is that when you're cutting the ends of the handle, to cut it, it with a little bit of a groove so that it it's round and it sits on the round shape of your of your mug. Now, if you have a flat surface, of course, cut the cut the end of the handle flat. So try to mimic the shape um, of the pot that you're putting the handle on and mimic that in the ends of your handles and you'll find that that will go a long way to stop any, any separation as the pieces dry. The other one, the other uh, really helpful tip is that when you have joined the handle, join half of one end, half of the other end, and then get your brush and put a little dollop of water inside where the join is and then you seal it up completely. So that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. Today is beautiful, sunny, breezy day in Jamaica. Not a cloud in the sky. And uh, when I finish this, I'm going to go out and enjoy some of that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Caribbean weather. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe to my channel and you haven't already, then hit the subscribe button. It's... Um, it's just a little journey, my journey, as I take you through my world of pottery. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a really, really wonderful day. Bye-bye.